Next up, Weekly Standard contributor Jeff Anderson to talk about Rick Santorum's conservative credentials. Uh, Jeff, welcome. Thank you. Uh, now, Mitt Romney and his uh, surrogates, like Tim Pawlenty, for example, really have the knife out uh, for Rick Santorum before tonight's Arizona debate. And the biggest attack line seems to center around Mr. Santorum's uh, uh, spending record in Congress. But you say that there's a, a nonpartisan, apolitical way uh, to rank uh, the former Pennsylvania senator, thanks to something called the National Taxpayers Union. What is that? Right. The Nas National Taxpayers Union is a group that has Steve Forbes on its board of directors. It stands for limited government and liberty, and it's been rating members of Congress, scoring them with letter grades for 20 years. And if you look at the last, at the 12 years that Rick Santorum was in the Senate, his, uh, his GPA, his grade point average, according to National Taxpayers Association, or National Taxpayers Union, was a 3.66, an A minus, and the average senator during that tenure got a 1.69, a C minus. So Santorum was almost two letter grades above most, and that placed him fifth among the 50 senators who served throughout his tenure. And I, the other four that were ahead of him were all from more right-leaning states. I think we've got a chart. If we can, uh, if we can put that chart up, uh, is to show. I think do we have that there, folks? There we go. Um, so Rick Santorum, uh, an A, a John Kyle out of Arizona, an A plus, um, or at least close to an A plus. Um, now you know that Mr. Santorum's ranking doesn't even take into account the fact that the senator was coming from Pennsylvania. Why is that so important? Right, he gets no bonus points for that whatsoever, but I mean, clearly you can see that the, that the senators who serve, who, who represent more conservative states, tend to vote in a more fiscally conservative manner. That's, that's the constituency they have to be accountable to. Among, among people who served, who, who represented states from Pennsylvania left, the release as far left as Pennsylvania, uh, Santorum's 366 GPA was, was first by a mile. The, the number two GPA was 2.07, Olympia Snows. Arlen Specter, the other Pennsylvania senator, had a 1.98. He was next. But Santorum wasn't just beating the people from Pennsylvania and more left-leaning states like Pennsylvania. He, he beat 22 of 25 senators from Republican-leaning states. And I mean, it was really an impressive record. It's, it, it's extraordinary, and that's why you, it's such an interesting piece, because you don't have a lot of media outlets reporting this. Um, when you say talk about his spending record, does that take into account things like, for example, earmarks, which is what the Romney campaign uh, seems to talk a lot about? Yeah, the National Taxpayers Union ratings are based on, on everything, all the votes that the senators took um, throughout their tenure, and it really is it's a big picture. It's easy to... It's easy to pick out one or two isolated anecdotal things and, and seize on those from a 12-year Senate career. But if you look at the big picture, the year-to-year -year ratings, uh, Santorum's numbers are, are quite impressive. And on the whole, I think you could say, looking at the NTU data, that Santorum may well have been the most fiscally conservative senator during his tenure. And if he wasn't, he was almost certainly in the top three. We're talking to Weekly Standard contributor Jeff Anderson. Um, Jeff, let's turn to the other side of politics now and talk about President Obama. Where did he rank in the NTU rankings? <laughs> uh, President Obama only served for, well, he served four years in the setup, but only three of those did he actually, was he there enough to actually get a grade from NTU. And in all three years, he got a 0, 0.00 or a rock solid F. Uh, so Jeff, do you think, given that, in comparing where Santorum ranks, um, you think the senator has been very successful in communicating his spending record uh, to the public so far in the campaign, or not? Well, I think he's done a, a good job of late. I, I think, in a way, um, the Romney attacks are something of a blessing because it gives Santorum an opportunity to highlight this side of his record, which previously he was more well known as a social conservative, but he really has been an excellent fiscal conservative, and, and if not for this opportunity, he might not have had an opportunity to really put that out there as much. It'll be interesting to see whether he talks about it in tonight's debate. And in terms, just, just to go back to the, the environment uh, that, that the senator was operating in, not just the fact that he was in Pennsylvania, and we've got a uh, little under a minute left, Jeff, uh, but what about the, the congressional environment that he was operating in? Were these big spending congresses uh, that he was casting these votes in? Well, it kind of varied. I mean, he was there from 1995 to 2006, so he had some, some better years and some worse years. But one interesting thing is that 
during the first Bush administration when a lot of people would say uh, that the Republicans kind of uh, let the wheels go off the wagon and lost their focus on, uh, on being fiscal conservatives. Santorum got a 4.0 GPA, a straight A GPA during the first term of the Bush administration, which no other senator from any state matched. So uh, again, that doesn't even take into account that he was from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Well, that's one heck of a record. Uh, to Weekly Standard contributor Jeff Anderson, thank you so much uh, for being with us today.